Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Yep. All right. If there's a mother in your car, let me hear you hum. Happy Mother's Day. We want to welcome all of you today as we continue with our outdoor drive-in services. Uh, wished we could get around and hug every mother in the parking lot, but we're going to have to wait on that yet for a while. But we do love you. We appreciate you guys coming out as we continue to bless our Lord regardless of circumstance and situation. Let's go ahead and start our worship service. your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show
Christian faith, we will be true to Thee till death. Again, we are thankful for all of you for being here. We're thankful for the mothers, the faithful Christian mothers that have raised us with love, with the church, and as for mine, who never spared the rod, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I love you, Mom, and I am thankful that we are all here together today. Let's go ahead and have a quick prayer before our last song. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be here today to worship you, to praise you, to take time to honor our mothers the mothers throughout that loved their children, raised their children in your word, that have lived an example of love. We pray that you would watch over all mothers today. May they all have their eyes on you and their loving arms around their children. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. grateful for being in the Lord's parking lot this morning. I'd like to take a moment to welcome all those who are here uh, virtually with us, live on Facebook, also on the webpage as well. We're kind of glad that you're both uh, uh, with us, and for whatever reason that you are not uh, in with us in the parking lot, uh, we are glad that we are able to get together in every way we can, because it's important that we get together. You know, today is a very special day because uh, <clears throat> we can we can uh, we come together uh, like this as a family for two primary reasons. One is this: that we're here to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our goal every time that we're here together is to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we're also going to honor some others. Is it my microphone doing that? Probably. And, and, but the, really, we're here to also honor our mothers, okay? Now, both is a, a, a lifetime task. 
uh, for uh, us. And I'll tell you what, uh, it is hardly no way that we can do this in an hour. You know what I mean? There's hardly any way that we can take a time to, to worship and just say, I got one hour to make this work. I'll tell you, when I start to put together a Mother's Day sermon, I'll, I'll just tell you, I struggle always because there's nothing that I can, I suppose that can be said uh, that will ever be said that'll be eloquent enough, that'll be expressive enough, or you know, articulate the true value of mothers. There was a school teacher who gave her second grader lesson, uh, a lesson on magnets. And the next day, the teacher asked the students this question. She said, my name has six letters. The first one is M, and I pick up things. Who am I? When the test papers were turned in, the, the, the surprise find that 50% of the students' answer was mothers. <laughs> they pick things up, and you know, we know that's true. That's what mothers do. They always do that. There's a few things, though, more powerful than I think, than <clears throat> the tears and prayers of a mother. You know, a Mother's Day is always bittersweet. Uh, since my mom passed and and I know since a lot of you guys can say the same thing as I have and you know I've been able to uh, help it's been help help me cope with because I've been able to talk to you guys and how you've when you've lost your mothers how you felt and how you were able to carry on and and it is uh, but the blessings of the memories of my mom and the tears and the prayers I mean few things are more tender and loving than a mother's hug, right? I mean, we like that mother's hug. We like that compassionate touch that our mom gives us. Someone once pointed out that of the 69 kings of France, only three were truly loved by their subjects. And those, who, those three were the only ones reared by their own mothers as tutors and guardians. Napoleon once said, remember this? The hand that rocks the cradle, what? Rules the world. So let me pose a hypothetical question for you. A hypothetical question. Are you ready? If you had to choose someone else to raise your son or daughter, who would you choose? And, and why? I mean, you, when, uh, if you're looking for a perfect mother, uh, that is, uh, you know, to raise your child, who would she be? I mean, would she be wealthy? Would it be a wealthy person that you would decide? Or maybe it would be, uh, uh, have, maybe it'd be a sense of it would be someone uh, who would have other children. If that's the quality, if they have to have other kids, then maybe that would be the quality that you would choose. Or maybe she would be famous or well-educated. Maybe that's who you would choose to raise your kid, or, or someone who would be mature or experienced, okay? What would she be like if you knew in your mind that someone else was going to raise your kid? Now, for God, that was not a hypothetical question, okay? When God did, did, determined to send his son to save the world, he had to choose a mother, okay? He had to choose a mother who would be responsible for rearing, really, the God, cloaked, in human flesh. As the mother of Jesus, Mary is better known, I think, than any other mother in the world history, isn't she? And she has held a place of highest honor since those days of that of the manger in Bethlehem and all that she's done. She was a hand she was hand selected by God. She was uh, uh, brought hand selected to really to by God, the God of the universe, to bring the Son of God, our Savior, uh, into the world and then to nurture him. And really nurture him until the day that he died on the cross. You know, I would say that she's probably the Michael Jordan of motherhood. She's the standard by which parents really uh, that are trying to do an excellent job of raising their kids uh, are measured by. So as we honor mothers today, I'd like to take a closer look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, what can we learn uh, from her in our lives? What can we learn from her? What was her life like? How do we, uh, how do her, her experiences, you know, reflect those of a godly mother 
Uh, and how can we emulate that? Well, I want to start this morning by talking about her surprise. Mary was living in a simple, small town, secluded life, uh, when suddenly everything in her life changed. We kind of get that, don't we, now? We kind of understand about change. Well, her life completely changed, and Mary was shoved from the shadows into the spotlight when an angel of God appeared to her, and this is what he said. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him a name, Jesus, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Boy, can you imagine that? Mary, I'm sure, was dumbfounded. In fact, whenever she found that out and heard that, the only thing she could manage to say was this, but how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. Can you imagine her surprise? I mean, can you imagine her shock? Now, you got to keep in mind that Mary was probably about 15 years old when this happened. You think kids grow up quickly now. Just think about what it was back then. Back in Mary's day, they were usually married and were juggling a couple kids by the time they were 16 or 17 years old. She must have been terribly overwhelmed by it all. And then probably, bottom line, it hit her this, hit her big boy. I am not married. I'm, in fact, I'm engaged to a guy. All this all hit her at once. She said to herself, how in the world am I going to explain this to my folks? How am I going to explain this to my significant other guy named Joseph? How am I going to explain that to him? Can you imagine the pain in his eyes when she told him that, that, that she was pregnant? Would he believe it? No. In fact, he didn't believe it. In fact, he was ready to write her off and send her packing. Her parents might even have kicked her out of the house. We don't know for sure, but think about it. She went and lived with her cousin Elizabeth for six months. Actually, for three months. You know, it just takes two little words to change your life forever. You know what those two little words are? I'm pregnant. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can remember when Shara first came and told me that she was pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'll just tell you right then, I had no idea how to be a dad. I talked about it a lot, but I remember when I saw Kelsey for the first time and the, and the nurse said, go ahead and hold her, Dad. You can't hurt her. You can't tear her up. I was scared to death to hold her after she was born. It's just that kind of thing. is just an amazing thing. But I remember that even as Cher and I talked about it, there was a little bit of anxiety when it came to our kids. <laughs> having our kids, but I can tell you that those two little words changed Shara and I's life forever, okay? And I'll just tell you, I wouldn't have it any other way, and I know you wouldn't either. Those girls have meant a lot to us, and it's been great to be the parents of those kids, and I know they have a great mother to make that a real uh, a, a, a joyful life for them as well. And when Mary found out about her unplanned pregnancy, she didn't see it as an inconvenience. In fact, she didn't look for a way out. God forbid, sneak off maybe to the nearest abortion clinic. She didn't do that. She saw her pregnancy for what it was, a gift from God. In fact, Mary actually wrote a song about the whole situation. Listen to what she says in verse 46 of chapter 2. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my soul rejoices in my God, for he has been magnified uh, he, because, for he has mag been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. And that's the truth. We have been calling her that, haven't we? This tiny little embryo taking shape in Mary's womb was not only the light of all the nations, but it was also the light of her life. He was the joy of her heart. And every single one of us, really, uh, we owed uh, of our own salvation, we, in, in a sense, Mary's decision to love and accept the gift from God tells us what a blessed thing it is. Here we owe our lives to our own mothers for making the same decision as well. You know, thank God for mothers everywhere. Thank God for mothers everywhere who, who, although they might have been shocked 
might have been surprised who were they were willing to adapt to take life as it comes in that way to graciously accept this great gift from God that God had placed uh, within them James Keller said it this way he said every mother has the breath taking privilege of sharing with God in the creation of a new life and when God places a child or children in your arm he will for you uh, he his will for you is to bring them up in a home where they will know God and his amazing love Mary's pregnancy may have come as a surprise but I'll tell you she responded with unwavering love and devotion for that beautiful baby boy who would grow up to be the savior of the world well, next, let me draw your attention to Mary's service. Her service, this was amazing. And what amazes me about Mary is that she accepted the angel's announcements. And after he explained to her, nothing is impossible with God, but the Holy Spirit would come upon her, this is what she said. I am the Lord's servant, and I will do whatever he wants. May everything you say to me come true. Now, I'm sure that Mary had no idea that her service to the Lord would, would tell, uh, and, and I just tell you, no, no parent ever does, but she certainly found out uh, the long way around when it came to her son. You know, what, what, what we can forget, uh, what we can't, uh, cannot forget is that Mary not only gave birth to Jesus, but she had Jesus... From childhood to adulthood, she she reared him, she mothered him, and she did everything a devoted mother could do for a son whom that you know she knew was no ordinary boy. I mean, granted, Mary had a bit of advantage with Jesus, did she not? She had a little boy who was always obedient, always. Parents, can you imagine that? Never having to tell your ten-year-old twice, never having to tell your sixteen-year-old twenty times. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> That's kind of the way I think. I mean, that's, that's really what every mom wants for Mother's Day, isn't it? A loving and obedient child who really, who would be better, uh, uh, that would be a lot better maybe than even chocolates or, or cards or flowers, an obedient child. And that's what Mary got every year. But before you start thinking that Mary had an easy think again, Mary had a job of constantly protecting her son from the very moment that Jesus was born, his life really was in danger. There was a wicked king called King Herod, and, and he was on the throne, and he sought to destroy Jesus, forcing Mary and Joseph to flee to Egypt. Now, Mary protected Jesus from Herod and so many other things that would probably hurt him. Mary also protected Jesus' identity. You know, although that, Jesus, although that Mary knew who Jesus was and who he was to become, she really didn't tell anybody. In fact, it says that Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and often thought about them. This was after the shepherds had gone away and they were all excited. Everything was exciting about what was going on and, and she, she held them in her heart. Mary protected her. And who would forget that stunt that Jesus pulled? Remember the one in the temple? Remember that one? I mean, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus are making their annual, annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and the 12-year-old Jesus decided to stay a couple extra days on his own, 12 years old. Now, sure, he had the best possible intentions. And sure, he, he, he was trying to be closer to his Heavenly Father. <laughs> but don't you know that that incident kind of gave Mary a kind of a heart stop right then? Where is Jesus? <laughs> There's a lot of people ask that question, but she asked it in a way that no one else did, right? Where is Jesus? What do you mean? I thought you were looking after him. Where is Jesus? Any parent who lost their little boy or little girl in a crowded department store or, or shopping mall has tasted what Mary felt that day. Think about what you thought about. I, I can think of a thousand times that I've been in that situation. One time I was uh, taking Elizabeth to... We were going into town or something. I told Elizabeth to get in the car. I jumped in the car, and I'm driving to the town, and I'm talking to her, and she's not answering me. I look back. She's not in the car. I'm driving. I'm at the golf course. I turn around, spin my tires, go back to the house. She got in the other car. 
And that's what scared me. I'll tell you what, that from that day forward, every time I got in the car, including now, I look to see if Elizabeth's in there. <laughs> I'll just tell you, it's hard stopping when those things happen. But imagine losing your little one for three days. Oh my goodness. They must have been uh, uh, the second worst experience that Mary had with Jesus. We'll, we'll talk about the first one here in a minute. But don't forget, Jesus wasn't, wasn't an only child. I mean, Mary didn't remain a perpetual virgin. She had more kids. Jesus had several brothers and sisters. Mary had a house full of rugrats and ankle biters. And she had to deal with all of them at one time. Okay? Jesus may have been an obedient child, but that doesn't mean the other humans were. Okay? Now, I wonder how many times Jesus' brothers and sisters say, why can't, when she looks at them and she'd say, why can't you be more like Jesus? <laughs> I think that my mom said that about me a time or two. Why can't you be more like Jesus? Well, it's not easy being a mother, is it, moms? It's not easy. It's a hard job. And mothers' jobs are never over. In fact, when you're a mother, you become a professional cook, a referee, a maid, a dietitian, a teacher, a seamstress, a counselor, a disciplinarian, a coach, a taxi driver, and so many other things rolled into one. And guess what? There's no salary involved in that. Okay? One poem was written like this. Mama, mama, on a winter's day, milked the cows and fed them hay, slopped the hogs and saddled the mule and got the children off to school, did the dishes, mopped the floor, washed the windows, did some chores, cooked, a, cooked a, a dish of home dried fruit, pressed her husband's Sunday suit, swept the parlor, made the bed, baked a dozen loaves of bread, split some firewood and lugged it in enough to fill the kitchen bin, cleaned the lamp and put in oil stewed some apples so uh, she thought might spoil, churned the butter, baked the cake, then ex exclaimed, for mercy's sakes, the, calf had, uh, the calves have got out of the pen, uh, Kathleen, uh, the calves got out of the pen, uh, went out to chase them again, gathered the eggs and locked the stables, returned to the house to set the table, cooked a supper that was delicious and afterwards washed all the dishes, Fed the cat, sprinkled, uh, uh, sprinkled the clothes, mended the basket full of hose. <clears throat> then opened the organ and began to play when you come to the end of a perfect day. John Wax Maxwell once said this, the instant we are born, we are already owe someone nine months of room and board and we never get that debt paid. Nine months of room and board right when you're born. Now he's right, he really is. Moms, we owe you more than you could ever, than, than we could ever repay, and probably more than we'll ever know. Being a mother sometimes comes as a surprise, as it did with Mary. It means a lifetime of service, a lifetime of hard work, but it also comes with a sacrifice. And finally, let me, let me lead your thoughts to Mary's sacrifice, okay? Unfortunately, Mary's story isn't just really, in a sense, sunshine and roses. A dark cloud loomed over her son. And here's the fact, Mary knew it. Mary knew there was a dark cloud. You see, when Jesus was eight days old, Mary and Joseph were required by law to take him to the temple to have him circumcised. Now, a strange thing happened on the way to the temple that day. But there's an old man. His name was Simeon. And he approached them. And the Bible says that he was moved by the Holy Spirit as he approached them. And when he saw the baby, he announced this. Get this. Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is the light to reveal God to the nation. And he is the glory of your people Israel. Can you even imagine? what that would have meant when she heard that. Now, you might be taken back a little bit if a stranger walked up to your baby and they said something like that. But then again, Mary knew who Jesus was. She knew that Jesus was special. This had all happened because of the miraculous things. She knew it better than anybody. 
She liked that part when she said about all the glorious things that he was going to do. Boy, if he would have just stopped there, she'd have been fine. But that didn't happen. He went on and said this, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken again, uh, spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. What an amazing thing that was there to be able to do that. I wonder how long she pondered that, pro that prophecy. You know, I don't know about you lately, but I, my mind has been going 100 miles an hour. How about you? I, I just can't. Every time I, I think that I've kind of got this all wrapped, my head wrapped around everything going around, uh, I spend another sleepless night trying to wrap some more around it. It's, it's one of the toughest things I can imagine. I and mean, this is something that came out of surprise. Can you imagine if we had known about this our whole life and it was going to happen? Can you imagine what our minds would have been going through? I can't even imagine what Mary thought when she heard those words. What is he talking about? I mean, the prophets, it said, tried to figure out what they were saying when they were saying that Jesus was going to be glorified, but then he was also going to be the one who would be on a cross. They didn't know what the cross, the cross was, but they, he was going to be pierced, and, and they were going to be a, a something you know, wrapped into his side, and, and they're, they're always sitting there, what in the world is he talking about? And yet... Mary had him right in front of her as a little boy, eight days old, and from that point on, she had to be sitting in her mind, what did he mean by that? What did he mean? You know, Mary always knew that her son was special, but she did not know that her son was going to die for the sins of the world. You know, I love that song that Mark Lowry uh, wrote about a song about Mary. Did you know? We sing this a lot at Christmas. Okay. And, and he verbalized a question that all mothers all over the world have wondered about when we read Mary's story. And this is what it says. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Did you know that? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. These are great questions. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Did you know that? He was going to do that. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Mary, did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kissed your little baby, you kissed the face of God. That's such a great song. Did you know that? Did you know that? Have you ever considered the thought that Mary had when she stood there and watched her son die on a cross because of yours? and my sins. You ever think about that? Can you imagine how horrible that must have been when she saw him on that cross and bleeding and she could do nothing about it? Moms are supposed to fix things, right? She could do nothing but sit and watch her son die on a cross. I don't know, no. I, I don't, I, I know. I don't think I don't know. I know I don't know that I have any words to describe what Mary felt that day as she watched those soldiers nail her son, her, uh, her Savior, to the cross. You know, I, I think about this last week. I was watching the news, Channel 3, and there was a young boy who had a cancer relap. I don't know whether you saw that or not. There was a whole bunch of people that met at Cox South. There was a big crowd. The, the, the fire uh, department was there. And the police were there. And they run their sirens. And, and they were just really excited about uh, they were letting this little boy kind of in a weird way. I mean, it was like a last wish. Because the boy's got cancer and they can't do anything about it. And, and can you imagine? I mean, I, I, I know I've, I know 
people who have lost their kids. And I, I it's just hard to believe. And it, it's tough. Every single child, no matter how long or how, you know, how short their stay on earth is, really touches lives. It really does. But no child more than Jesus. For those mothers out there who have laid a little boy or a little girl to rest, you're not alone, no. Mary went through this. I tell you, the last glimpse of Mary uh, is more than this, though it didn't end there. In fact, it's a heartwarming thing. And you know, last week we began talking about, uh, last couple weeks we've been talking about the church in action, acts in action, and how it began. And one of the neatest things that you'll see is that that passage that we read, and as I read that passage and as I preached that passage, I thought to myself, you know, this would be a good thing to talk about uh, when it comes to Mother's Day. Because it says, you know, if we would just read and we just had the Gospels and it was over there, we would think, what a tragic end. Mary, though, shows up again one more time in the Bible. And it's in the book of Acts, okay? See, after the death of Jesus, after the resurrection of Jesus, after the ascension of Jesus, Luke tells us this. He says this, Peter, James, and John, uh, Peter, James, and Andrew, and Philip, and Thomas, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and James, and Simon, and Judas, the son of James, all met together and were constantly uh, united in prayer, along with, get this, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? See, Mary got to see her son and her Savior alive again. She was honored by the disciples and was cared for by the Apostle John. See, even in the absence of her husband and eldest son, Mary had a spiritual family. And guess what? That spiritual family has really spans the entire globe through every time. It's called the church, folks. And you have that spiritual family as well here at Elm Branch. She lived faithful with one eye on the clouds looking forward to the day to see her son again. And we see that we are the same way. We are keeping one eye on the sky all the time. And even more so, I think, as the day becomes where we start thinking it's approaching fast. I'll just tell you, moms, you hold a special place in our spiritual family. I love the way Preston said, maybe you had a mother in your car to honk in it, because it is that you hold a special place in our hearts in, in the church here at Elm Branch. Without you, I don't know, uh, I think Preston said this, when it comes to mom, most of us wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? I, uh, the prayer cover that our mothers gave us, the concern and the drag us off to church, making sure that we got there, that we had that kind of family, that, that upbringing that works. I'll just tell you, mothers, may God look upon you with favor the way he did on Mary. And I pray that each one of you have a heart like hers. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for all you do. We thank you for the mothers, and we praise you, Father, for the opportunity to be able to celebrate and to honor mothers today. And I pray, Father, that each time as we honor these mothers, may they then turn, look at their own lives, and strive to do what you'd have them to do as they raise these children and raise them in the ways of the Lord. And we give you praise. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
have an opportunity this this morning, like I said, it's come a time when when we get an opportunity to, to, to honor our mothers. We should do this all the time. But you know, I, I was so, I, I, I kind of felt a little jealousy today when I had Preston saying Happy Mother's Day to his mother right here. You know, I'm like, ah! And I know that, uh, you know, I've talked to the leaders and, and we've all, and some of the leadership that I've had here over the years have, have been, said the very same thing. We've all said the same thing. Wow, we miss our mothers. But we, I'll just tell you, uh, don't ever, ever stop working hard to raising your kids in the Lord. And we'll do everything we can do here to help you as well. Let's sing that last verse together, and, and we'll celebrate that uh, as well. Sing my love, my God. talk to you about today. One is that uh, tonight at 7 o'clock will be a Sunday school class. I did a Sunday school class this week, promised you about that. <clears throat> so if you want to get on the web page uh, on tonight at 7, we'd be happy to uh, be able to have Sunday school together. It's not very long. I took about 35, uh, 40 minutes and we'll be doing that uh, while we're on the virtual side for the next few weeks <clears throat> making that happen. So uh, plan to be there for that. Also today, in honor of our mothers, we've got plants, and we'd like for each of uh, the mothers to take a plant. <clears throat> One of the things that, if we have extra plants uh, after the service, start this afternoon, where uh, uh, if you need some, want some more plants, come see me, we're going to sell them to you, okay? $3 a piece uh, for you. If you want some extra plants, we'd be happy to let you have them, okay? But that's after the service, probably this afternoon, we begin, we'll, we'll do that. So let me know if you're interested, I'll hold them back for you. Uh, for that, okay? Uh, so make sure that we plan to do that. You know, one of the things that as we, uh, uh, as I, you know, I'm saying today, uh, please stay in touch with us anyway through Facebook, through uh, Facebook Live, through any other way you can. And if you don't, if you know somebody that's not getting these services and needs some uh, DVDs, we, we're making DVDs also. So let us know if you know of anybody that's not getting any kind of virtual uh our opportunity to be able to be with us and let us know and we'll do our best to make sure they get some DVDs of our, of our services. Okay? Um, so, it's good that glad you're here today. I know I'm saying goodbye because I'm getting ready to do a communion devotion and once I do that, we're going to do our communion like we normally do and, and don't forget to pick up your flowers, ladies. Okay? You know, I was talking about this. One of the things that I like about the uh, church is that they continue did I just go dead? No, here we go. I just uh, one of the things about a church is so exciting is that they continually met together. And one of the things that they did when they continually met together was they got around the Lord's table. Next week we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what happened after the church began when the Holy Spirit came down. And as that Holy Spirit came down and the church began, and one of the things it says that they did is they they broke bread together. And that's what we do. It's one of the things that. Uh, that we do every week to even identify uh, who we are. We meet and we do this in remembrance of him. So this, this morning, as you get the opportunity to take your family and to uh, commune, you know, I want, I want you to think about what we talked about today, about Mary, about how she and, and her life, the things that she went through. Can you imagine all that? And just be able, be able as we do that, just uh, praise the Lord that... Uh, we have an opportunity to have salvation through the one that really Mary raised. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. I pray that you would just be with us and, and, and pray, Father, that as we leave this place, that you'll continue to bless us. We give you praise for all that you do. And in the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain.
One more thing I wanted to make a, tell you is that next week is our graduation Sunday. As well, we'll be honoring the graduates uh, during our service. So that's another thing you can look forward to for next week. Okay? Uh, God bless you all for being here today. And for all those out that are watching Facebook Live, God bless you too. And uh, we will keep in touch with you any way we can.
Oh. 